Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here, here once again is in my garage shop, and today we're finally getting around to doing something I've been talking about doing for quite some time. Uh, one of these band saws was made in 1991 by Shopsmith. The other one was made in 1998, I believe, by Shopsmith. So 30 years old, over 20 years old, and uh, both of these are starting to show some, some dry rot in the rubber tires. These bandsaw wheels are made of aluminum, and on them, they have rubber tires glued in place. And those rubber tires need to be uh, firm and intact, and yet they have to have a little bit of pliability in order to keep traction on the bandsaw blade. So it's time for these to be replaced. Now, I've replaced many of these over the years, but always using the original rubber tire with adhesive method. Both of these have tires that are glued in place. Uh, but I wanted to try something new, and what's new is, well, new to me anyway, urethane tires. And since there are so many variations on this available today, I thought, well, which one's the best one to get? I don't know. So let's go ahead, since I have two saws to replace the tires on, let's get two different kind. Um, both of these are available on Amazon. The blue one for sure is available through eBay. Um, Shopsmith also sells one, and I bought a set of those, and I've misplaced them over at my shop, so maybe we'll get to those eventually. But I want to try both of these out. Now, because I have really no idea which of these saws are, are going to get the most wear in, in the coming years, uh, I've decided to do something a little unorthodox. That is, I'm going to mix these tires. So each of these saws is going to get a blue tire and an orange tire, but I'll be sure that on one of them I'll have the blue on the lower and the other one, the orange on the lower. And that way we can see if there's any difference between the wear and tear on the drive wheel versus the, the upper wheel, which really just idles. Um, we'll just see how this goes. Um, but come along with me. I need to remove the blade and get the tires removed, and we'll see how we go from there. Now we're just going to fast forward through this because this is not my preferred method. We'll get to that here in just a minute. But what I've done uh, the, the hard way is just made a cut with the utility knife across the tire and then getting up and underneath it a little bit to where I can get some grip on it and just pulling. And you'll see here in just a minute, I will use the body of the bandsaw as a, kind of a leverage point and we'll begin to spin the wheel away. And uh, that gets most of the rubber off. Like I said, this is not the ideal way of doing this, but if you uh, if you need to, this is a way. This leaves some residue, which you'll have to clean up. So if you take a look at what I have encountered, the tire came off pretty clean. This wheel does not have any grooves in it, but it the tire is sticking along that back rim, and that actually makes a lot of sense because when you apply the adhesive to the rubber tire and you slide or stretch the tire on, you almost always get a bead of glue that pushes its way back along that back edge, and then you gotta wipe that off. Well, that back edge is sticking quite tenaciously, and so what I've been doing here is just protecting my hand behind the back of the bandsaw and running a utility knife underneath this and to that back shoulder. Right, see so like that, and keeping my hand safely blocked back here when you're not in the way <laughs> to try to cut this back. Additionally, what I might want to do is to get the blade in here and run it against the back, the back rim to get that to come loose. Uh, it's just a matter of muscles at this point. I'm making that undercut is helping to pull this away pretty cleanly. So something that might help you get a better vantage point on this is to lower your uh, upper guide block and you can work from the side of the saw here that gives you a little better access. And you can see we're getting there undercutting the back edge really seems to be helping. So we've got most of the rubber tire removed now. There's a little bit of glue residue, a little bit of uh, rubber still left. At this point, we've got a couple things we could do. We could go at this with some solvent. Um, 
list below your favorite solvent for this application, I would probably go ahead and use lacquer thinner. Um, or we can get a little bit more aggressive. Now, I'm going to go with an aggressive method, and that is I'm going to use a wire brush, but not just any old wire brush. For sure, you don't want to destroy the aluminum. So I'm using a brass wire brush, and because I'm super lazy, I'm using it, using it on a drill. That means in order to be safe, I have to, have to, have to protect my eyes. And uh, if you've ever used one of these and didn't protect your face, you'll know it's not a good prize to get these little things thrown at your face. So this is going to go a little something like this. I'm going to hold on to the wheel so it doesn't spin under the, uh, the rotation of the brush and just work on small sections of this at a time. There's a good argument to be made for removing the wheels from your bandsaw. We, we've done that in a couple videos. You're welcome to go find those. I'll, in fact, I'll link to them in the description if you want to see how easy it is to remove. I don't have a workbench in this space, and so it's not going to be any easier for me to remove the tires, uh, to remove the wheels. So I'm just going to work with it on the saw. Notice the rotation of the wheel, and I'm pushing this way. I don't want to get caught with this spinning the wheel uh, in the same direction, so I'm working against the rotation of the brush. Now, you might be asking the same thing I did, which is, would heat help? Maybe. It's pretty cold here in North Carolina right now. It's about 40 degrees in the garage, um, and it's possible that applying some heat to this wouldn't hurt. So uh, on the bottom wheel, let's go ahead and try this. I'm guessing it's really the wheel is what I need to warm up here. I don't need to get hot, but I'd like to warm up that adhesive a bit. made a cut. Yeah, that seems to have helped. It's coming off a lot cleaner. So let's continue to heat that up. Almost got it off in one piece. Yeah, that really helped dramatically easier. So just as before, we got a little extra adhesive along that back edge. We'll hit that with the uh, hit that with the wire wheel, and that'll be done. All right, we're now pretty much clean as a whistle. So there are two acceptable approaches for uh, applying these tires. One is to just stretch it on and be done with it. Um, but the other one is to soak them in hot water. Uh, to make them more pliable. The fact that these are so cold right now, I'm thinking that the, cold, the hot water method is probably the wisest one. But uh, for fun, let's just go ahead and try uh, one of each of these on this saw without using the hot water method. And then we'll try the hot water method. Each of these tires came with a tool to aid in the process. The Blue Max tire came with this dowel 
has a nail and a little uh, little plastic sleeve. And the uh, the orange one came with a little screwdriver with a tube stretched over it. Um, we'll see how those work. So because it's so cold out here, it's about 40 degrees, um, these tires are retaining the shape that they came in their package. And one of the methods that you can use is to stretch these on uh, as they come, and I can't do that. They're just way too tight. So another option is to heat them up. Now, you can heat them up in hot water, but there's some warnings about this. Um, you want to shoot for somewhere between 120 and 140 degrees. If you exceed 140 degrees, uh, it's possible that these will get so pliable that they'll stretch beyond their ability to stretch back. So right now I have these, uh, one of each tire over here at a cooler that is being heated by a sous vide device. That is a, a device that you cook things in hot water. And um, well, here I'll show you a quick quick picture of this. So here I've got my sous vide device in a cooler and the tires are in here. I tried it a minute ago at 120 degrees and they just wouldn't stretch. So I'm taking it up now to 130 and we'll try again there. Notice that the blue tire has already started to straighten out a little bit. That's a good sign. Okay, so I tried it at 120 degrees. No go. Cranked it to 125. Still wouldn't work. 130? No. 135? No. We are approaching now 140 degrees. And uh, the blue one is getting a, a fair amount of stretch to it now. But the orange one isn't giving at all. So uh, I'm going to, again, go with the blue one first and we'll see how this goes. getting somewhere. Boy, is this tight. Goodness gracious. <laughs> there we go. Now, we can get that all the way up onto the rim going off the back and then get the tool out of there. Woo! That was a ride. Okay. Yeah, we don't want that to be riding high on either the front or the back rim because the way this shopsmith wheel is designed to have a bit of a taper to it uh, we don't want to eliminate that with a tire that's not properly seated now because the the wheels run to the back if you got any play push that tire all the way to the back of the the wheel. All right. So using the, the head of the nail on this tool is making quick work of that. There we go. Whew. Now we'll have to see if there's any chance we can get the orange one on. Let's see. I mean, it, it is just tight as could be. See how it goes. All right, we're going to give this uh, this orange tire one last try. It is uh, currently at 145 degrees. If this doesn't work, it is never going to work. So here we go. Whoop, sorry about that.
it's never going to work. <clears throat> Goodness gracious. It's on. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. All right. Don't come off now. Don't you dare. <laughs> All right. Let's push this back towards the back. Here, you need a view of this. Let's see. Got to push it all the way back against that back shoulder. That was way more work than it should have been. That's uh, I'm, I'm going to continue. I'm going to get this one taken off and get the two tires installed on it in the opposite order. Um, I can tell you right now, just based on the installation process, I'm a much bigger fan of the Blue Max than I am of this uh, this uh, orange one. The orange one, I also don't care for the texture. It's way too slippery, and I can't imagine how that's going to behave driving a bandsaw blade. The uh, Blue Max has got a great texture to it. It's glossy on the inside, but textured on the outside. So, all right, we'll see how this goes. I look forward to uh, responding to your questions, comments, and cheap shots in our midweek episode of Stumped Q&A. So be sure to say something. And also, you'll find links in the video description for both of these. See you then. Make it a great week.